Hey everyone, my name is Jay Marshall. I'm a Principal Cloud Development Strategist for VMware's vCloud Air Business Unit, welcoming you to five starting points for VMware vCloud Air. This particular episode is focused on disaster recovery. We have a series of these videos out there as ways to get our customers started on our public cloud offering. And disaster recovery has actually been one of our more successful launches as customers are trying to find easy, inexpensive ways to do DR in their environments. It tends to be a very pricey thing for enterprises to have to do. And so they leave a lot of workloads unprotected. So it's been a great service of ours. So what we're gonna to try to look at today are some of the challenges that I just spoke of around supporting a DR plan in the enterprise. We're gonna look at some of the actual DR solution requirements that we see most customers looking for. And then of course, how vCloud Air meets those requirements. And then we'll wrap up. So let's get started. So a lot of writing on the screen here, but it's a very important topic when we talk to our customers because DR, once again, if you haven't had one, that's great. Uh, but you know, a lot of customers of ours that have, uh, it can be a very tumultuous time. And so we tend to see two options. One, our customers that don't have any DR at all, okay, and they're looking at a net new solution. Or we have customers that have some DR, but once again, they're not able to use it in its fullest capacity just because of cost. So for those that haven't had any DR plan at all, you know, they're trying to figure out where on the scale of protecting everything to protecting only tier one, they want to fall. Uh, budget, budget and time and resources tend to be a big issue, once again, because it's not a cheap solution. And then they also have to be concerned with supporting the solution, because it's not just a technology uh, decision. You don't just install DR, click next, next, finish, and walk away, right? There's a lot of other issues that you need to deal with in the long term. And then just ongoing management and maintenance, uh, things like failover, things like tests, and making sure that everything comes back the way you expect it to. So for customers that have been doing DR, but when we say they're looking for another option, you know, a lot of flat budgets, most people don't put more DR into their budgeting plans. You know, there's new applications, maybe hardware refreshes, other business needs that tend to take precedence uh, over just more DR because you don't really get anything out of it, right? Great insurance policy, but there's nothing you can put an ROI on. Or their solution might be out of date. So it's something that was fine 10 years ago, but it's not keeping up with all the requirements of the business or maybe just the scale and the scope of the solution can't keep up with everything. And then we have things like platform compatibility. What about our net new applications, our next generation applications? These are things that we need to take into consideration when looking at a full disaster recovery plan. So with vCloud Air, you know, the two quotes that I think drive a lot of the opportunities that we had seen up until now uh, that we find very compelling, these are two quotes uh, from a recent Forrester Wave report. It says that infrastructure and operation leaders rate BCDR as a high priority, yet budgets have remained flat or down. So once again, how do, you, how do you correlate those, right? Really high priority, but we're not gonna spend money on it. And the second quote talks about in today's world of 24 seven business requirements, few companies can afford downtime, yet most are not allocating additional funds to prevent it. So once again, everybody knows it's critical, but the budgets don't exist to cover the whole workspace. So what most of our customers tell us is, look, we need something simple to use and manage because we can't continue this level of complexity for all of our workloads. We need flexible options to support different RPOs because traditionally, the lower the RPO, the more complex and more pricey the solution is. It needs to be something cost efficient because once again, I want to protect as much as possible. I want as minimal maintenance and support as possible uh, in this solution. So with vCloud Air, we have easy to access vCloud Air portal to actually set all of this up along with a vSphere web client plugin to do the actual replication part from your private data center. We have customizable RPO settings so that based on bandwidth and the actual machines you're protecting, you can adjust that accordingly. You're actually pushing your entire DR solution from a CapEx auto model over to an OpEx model. So you're not worrying about provisioning all this extra SAN and all this hardware and everything else. You can do it all straight on cloud capacity. And as with all of our solutions, it's the same vSphere platform, tools, and customer support. And I can't stress that customer support enough. As with everything we talk about with cloud, you have one GSS support number. So let's take a look at a demo where we're actually gonna take the vSphere replication appliance, show you how to connect that to your vCloud Air environment, and then we're gonna go ahead and protect our first VM. 
Okay, so we can see we already have our vSphere replication appliance installed in the vSphere web client. So the first thing we need to do is configure this. So we're gonna hop over to our browser and we're already logged into vCloud Air. So we're gonna pop over there real quick. We're gonna do our Nevada data center. And you'll notice one of our VDCs actually has a little blue cloud with a lightning bolt. So we'll click on that because that's our disaster recovery instance. And over to the right here, you can see the vCloud Director API URL. If we click that and grab right click on the API URL, that's all we need to configure our appliance. So let's go back over to the web client. We'll click on vSphere replication. And we simply have to go in under manage and pick that as a target site. So we'll hit target sites. And you'll notice the little icons to add one. There's the one that's been there all along for vCenter on the left here. But the next one to the right is actually to connect to a cloud provider. So we'll hit that. We're gonna paste that URL into both fields. And the first one, we wanna delete everything after the VMware.com. And in the organization name field, we're gonna delete everything before the actual VDC name, um, because that's the actual VDC. We'll go ahead and put in our username and password, that in, and then hit next when we're done. So this authenticates us to vCloud Air. We'll see the org name again, so we'll just select that in case we had multiples. We'll hit next on this one as well. And that's it, it gives us our options. We hit finish, and this will actually be connecting vCloud Air as a target site. On the right here, we can watch the process as it goes out and hooks up. And the replication appliance now will be synced up when this is done. Let's have to give it one more second. All right, there we go. Now when it comes up, we'll see it says missing network settings. This is perfectly normal. We just have to set up our networks. So if we select it, we'll see a new set of icons and we can hit the configure network icon. Now under here, what we're gonna see is a recovery network, which we'll pick demo-recovery. And we'll also see a test network that we have to configure. Now we've already set these up in vCloud Air. That's a whole separate process. We didn't wanna spend a lot of time on it. So you need to have a recovery and a test network both. And we have separate videos on that. So if we just pick demo-test, there we go, we have them both set. And we hit next. And just a validation screen, hit finish. And what we'll see here, looks like it's good. We hit refresh and there we go, we're now connected. So that's it. We've now connected our replication appliance and we're good to go. So let's go ahead and pick uh, a virtual machine. If we hit home and then we'll go under hosts and clusters and on the left hand side, let me click here real quick, okay. On the left hand side towards the bottom, we'll see a DR2C demo one. Uh, we've done this a couple of times before. If we right click and under replication actions, we're just gonna configure replication and we're gonna pick replicate to a cloud provider and hit next. Now this will show us the cloud provider we just set up. We can pick a storage policy. Now in this case, we'll pick the default. Uh, if we had other options, we could pick it accordingly, but we'll just go with the standard. We'll hit next. And if you're doing guest OS quiescing, you could pick that as an option. We won't actually do that in this demo. So we'll just hit next again. And our RPO times, we're gonna go ahead and bury it at 15 minutes, but this is where you could adjust there. Hit next again and finish. And once again to the right, we can see the configuration has taken place. If we go back home, back into vSphere replication again now, we can actually see under monitor the list of virtual machines being protected right now, just that same DR2C. Now it's in a status of configuring because as we can see on the right, it's still attempting to connect. If I refresh here, there we go. So now we're, we have an initial full sync status. At the bottom here, I can see another refresh. I'm at 0% if I hit it again. Okay, cool, we're at 1%. So right now we're just starting replication. If I come back to my Nevada data center on vCloud Air, and once again, back to my disaster recovery cloud, I'll drill inside of here, and under the virtual machines tab, I can see that DR2C-Demo1 machine. It's in a placeholder status. If I go to replication, I can see I have an RPO violation. Now it's not a bad thing, because this is just the initial sync, but you can see them inside of vCloud Air already. So if I bounce back over to the vSphere replication appliance, let's go ahead and give it one more refresh. Okay, so we're at 
So you can see this initial sync with vCloud Air is going to take a little bit of time. Uh, it depends on the size of your virtual machine image. So once that hits 100%, the status will change because now that virtual machine will be under protection in case of disaster recovery. And that's all there is to it. It's that simple. We set up our vSphere replication appliance inside of the vSphere web client to talk to our vCloud Air DR instance. Okay, We picked our first virtual machine and configured it uh, under the DR instance as well. We didn't have any hardware. We didn't have any offsite management. We don't have any complex configuration. It literally is that simple. Now, there are other videos that we have out there that show you how to install and configure the replication appliance itself, uh, as well as separate videos uh, that show you how to actually do failback and things of that sort. So if that's of interest, you know, please go out to Cloud Academy and check those videos out as well. But hopefully you can see here, I mean, the process of setting these virtual machines to back up uh, is very, very simple. So to summarize, some of the values and capabilities around what you just saw, okay, it's a very flexible solution to accommodate growth and varying environment needs. Because once again, with a simple click of a VM, I can actually do re uh, replication over to vCloud Air and bring it back if I need to. I can maximize the use of existing resources. And it's a very minimal investment required to begin using. Uh, the dedicated cloud option is very aggressively priced and you can fit a lot of virtual machines in there for initial use. So thanks so much for watching this episode of the five starting points for VMware vCloud Air. If you're interested in what you saw in this episode, feel free to reach out to your local VMware teams. If you just wanna get in and kick the tires, uh, please go to the link on your screen and sign up for an account. You get free credits, absolutely no commitment, and you can cancel at any time. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out the other episodes in the series. Have a good day.